Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is the Calculator Mod. Today we're going to be covering the Scientific Calculator and everything that it can do for you. So to start off with, of course, the Scientific uh, Calculator, as made before that I showed at the end of the previous video, uh, is made with some calculator assembly in gold and rich iron and some reinforced stone, etc. But by now you're familiar with uh, a little bit of the crafting mechanics. Well, now we get into a lot more interesting and, well, a little bit more challenging of stuff. But before I do, I am going to cover a few of the more simple things uh, as uh, shown here in front. Uh, to start with, we've got grenades. That's right. Grenades. Recipes for those is just a couple of baby grenades and a scientific calculator will get you a big grenade. And these things are very destructive. So you're going to want to be careful where, what you do with those things. Just just a little heads up that they're, they're very big booms. So I think they're even bigger than a regular TNT. At least that's my opinion. Uh, on top of that, we've got uh, these other here, other items here. You've got your small stone and your soil. These are little byproduct items that you might get through uh, processing. Now the uh, small, the soil, if you shift right click, you will throw it and it may also, you know, turn the ground into like farmland. Or if you toss it up in the air and it happens to land on you, Let's see if I can actually, there we go. You might get blindness for a few seconds here uh, if you hit an entity with it. Uh, on top of that we've got small stones which when thrown at the ground, can cause uh, gravel. And if you uh, hit an entity with these, it could cause some uh, small by uh, a bit of damage. As you can see there, a couple hearts worth. So it, it's actually pretty good for uh, throwing this stuff at somebody, so throwing some small stones, you know, stoning them. That's It's not a pleasant thing to do. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get into some more of the other stuff. We have here, uh, as before, We've got purified coal, which is a little bit better than enriched coal, which enriched coal before was just redstone and coal. Purified coal is the enriched coal divided by enriched gold ingots, and it's much better. Uh, whereas, if I take this power cube here and I put in enriched coal, which was the old small recipe, you'll see I get 3,000 uh, RF. If I put in purified coal, I get 10,000 RF. But it's not just purified coal that will that will work for that. And you can also create fire coal, which is just enriched coal divided by a lava bucket will get you fire coal. And that gets you the same amount of uh, RF power from it. So you have two different methods of obtaining some power. Uh, you know, instead of just using gold, you could also use lava. They're both finite resources, so that, that can be very beneficial. Now, we also have this item here, an energy module. Energy module, if you take a regular power cube, and divide by purified coal will get you this. And it is very useful. Now, these are regular power cubes, as you can see here. So they are going to be limited. So if I take an energy module, I can actually deposit energy in here. And you can see that it is currently depositing the energy that's in it into this. Now, I could also take the energy back out. And you can see that it is now increasing its value and decreasing the power cube's value. So it's a very handy way of actually, uh, you know, removing power and inserting power into several different types of machines or power cubes. Now, using it in a standard power cube is actually going to be a bit limiting. So let me keep that with me for a moment, and I will introduce you to the advanced power cube. This one here is much better, a 64,000 RF per tick input and output. So I could just put that in here, and it will, well, there we go. It will deposit everything in there, and I can suck it back out. So yeah, it's it's pretty quick, pretty efficient, and and much better for uh, input output storage. The uh, uh, recipe for this one isn't that bad. It requires redstone ingots, which uh, I, I will show you here in a moment. Redstone ingots are actually made with a scientific calculator, just an iron ingot and redstone, just dividing them, you know, together. And these are much better because you can actually shift right click. And you can change the input output on these here, uh, as well as you know, just insert things much much better and store a lot thing a lot of things uh, well just quicker and better in general. I'm gonna put the energy module back for now. Now redstone ingots have of course multiple uses. One of which, of course, is going to be uh, your familiar tools and weapons and stuff. And to compare it. If I have an iron pickaxe here, you can see it's got 250 uh, durability, and it's uh, the redstone has about 800, which is still shy of the uh, gold uh, and uh, version. So I, I, I know it's entirely up to you if you want to do that. 
Of course, it's just, you know, made with redstone ingots, as I showed before. And of course, they're going to have a slightly higher damage value on some of the tools, but not others. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to get into something like a basic terrain module, which is taking a calculator and dividing it by a redstone ingot will get you this. And it's a really handy little device. So you see here I've got stone. If I shift right click, it will say at the bottom left stone, grass block, or dirt, and it, it will cycle back through again. So right now it is set on dirt. If I now stop pressing shift and I press just right click, it will turn that stone into dirt. If I shift right click to do stone, I can then turn it back. I can then turn it into a grass block, and so on. And it will only affect these block types as well. So you can only turn a grass block into dirt or stone and vice versa. So if I try and use it over here, nothing happens because this is reinforced stone. I can't use it on you know wood or anything like that. So it is it is very limited, but it can make things very handy if you need to uh, you know like uh, you you wanted like a, a grassy area or you've got a whole bunch of stone in your farm uh, farm area that you want or you're just trying to smooth out a floor inside of a base what have you uh, it, it is very handy for that uh, you can change it to you know each one that you want anyway moving on we have some other things at the end of the previous video i should give a disclaimer i made a mistake and that was in the uh, creation of uh, hunger processors and such um, yeah, ma making the, the uh, amethyst wood trees. Uh, if you look in here, um, amethyst, the sapling itself is going to be needed to be made in a, a scientific calculator. So therefore, you know, amethyst plus the, the sapling will, will equal that, as well as the other recipes for creating amethyst. So my apologies on there if I was a little misleading. But uh, we now have a hunger processor, which is made with redstone ingots, large amethyst, and advanced assemblies. Uh, of course, amethyst can be harvested from trees, uh, as well as, uh, you know, used uh, to be obtained from lapis lazuli uh, in a stone separator, which is very, very simple and rather straightforward. Now, you place one of these things down, you can uh, access it, and you can put things in there. Hunger processor. Let, you can put in just about anything that you can eat. You can put in there, and it will turn them into hunger points. And you can see here, I placed a lot of zombie flesh or rotten flesh in here, 256. Now, if I take one of these, a hunger module, this one already has 256 in it, but if I take this, put it in here, it will then deposit more inside. Or I could withdraw hunger points. And what do hunger points do, one might ask? Well, let's grab this here. Uh, I, I am currently not in creative, so you notice that I am down by one and a half hunger. If I right click, it says I how many hunger points I have. If I shift right click, I instantly feed myself and you can see I'm starting to regenerate. And it's not just feed, it will fully saturate you. So you will have a long amount of running and jumping that you can do before you need to actually eat again, which actually you don't need to eat anymore. You just shift right click while you've got your hunger module and you can replenish it with just about any kind of foods. And you notice I didn't get any negative uh, effects from the zombie flesh. It just turns it into hunger points. That's it. It's a very cheaty way of doing things in my opinion, but you know what? If you have a lot of lag on a server or something like that, uh, and you're having trouble eating food, this can really make things much more pleasant to deal with. So uh, there you go. Your, your hunger module, fantastic device. Now moving on, we have weakened diamonds. Uh, uh, of course, these here weakened diamonds are made in scientific calculator by taking a diamond and reinforced iron ingots will get you four of these things. And what can you do with them? All sorts of things. One of which is going to be making, of course, some new tools. Now, in comparison, if I hold it up to an iron pick, which is 250, it has a durability of 1400 and a vanilla pick of diamond has 1561. Well, it is weakened diamond after all, and it has slightly better attack damage. Uh, it's actually about equivalent to uh, the diamond stuff for the most part, except for, of course, the axe and the hoe. I should also tell you that, uh, you know, you can take your hunger points, with your hunger module, let me grab this guy, you can put it in your stone assimilator, which is hooked up to an amethyst tree. You just have it here so it looks like it's, uh, you know, actually attached to it. Drop it in there and it will start absorbing all the hunger points that are absorbed from the tree. And you notice that this tree has no berries. This one does because this one, you would have to actually right click them individually if you did not have a stone assimilator already gathering these hunger points for you. So I recommend you just do this so that you can constantly have these stored all the time. 
and you don't have to run around right clicking these berries uh, to get the benefits in when instead it could just be automated you drop it in and you'll have a lot already in preparation for the next time you come back and you can see there it's already going back up because these regrow over time now to get into the more complex section over here we have a docking station this can be useful it's not you know entirely something that is required uh, but if you look here it is made with a power cube a couple calculator assemblies and some reinforced stone will get you this uh, you just right click and place it down on the ground and it'll say no calculator is mounted now you will have to put a calculator in there of certain specs if you try and put in there like your uh, uh, info calculator it's not going to work you have to put in there something like a scientific calculator for example click it in place and you can see now it has all the information that the scientific calculator would have your division signal uh, plus the output as well as uh, information about you know powering it you can insert stuff or you can have things piped in etc it's it's rather useful um, so you can have yourself a docking station and place it down in the world instead of only having things on you now Moving on from that, in the past, I had mentioned that uh, if you wanted to make yourself like a, a uh, you know, a little farming station here, I think it's a, 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 your greenhouse, powering those things was rather difficult to start because you'd use a lot of resources to get that. Well, that's where this comes in, the, star the starch extractor. Now, this isn't that bad to make. You take your energy module that you've already made and an amethyst, divide by it, and you get yourself a starch extractor. And it's basically a 40 RF per tick generator. It's very handy, uh, but it does require more than just one item. And I've actually did a little experimenting with this, and it's really, really efficient. It's not the fastest because it's 40 RF per tick, but it is above average in my mind. So you take some coal, you drop it in there, or other burnable materials, and you take some kind of starch, like uh, seeds or broccoli or potato or something like that. You put it in here, you see the starch fills in, and this is the percentage of the coal finished being burned, and that was one of the two coal, and it will generate power. And you notice there's no power being generated here. That's because it's going into the block next to it, which is being powered from it. So it works in a, a familiar fashion to power neighboring blocks. You can see it's now up to 41,000, and soon it'll be up to 42,000, etc. But it that that's the idea. So this will get you quite a bit, 64,000 RF off of just a couple coal and one potato, and you'll still have a tiny fraction of starch left over. Now I can keep on adding in more things. Let's put in some, uh, I think I could put in some regular seeds. There you go. We've got lots of starch, and then you just toss in a bunch of uh, coal as well, or whatever coal you like. You can put in some purified coal uh, if you so desire. You don't have to use regular coal. I was just using that as a comparison. Uh, now, moving on to things like the extraction chamber. Uh, this here has a couple different things it can do. Uh, and it is made with weakened diamonds, which you think, ah, it's a bit expensive, plus power cubes. But the, remember, four weakened diamonds are made from one diamond. So it's not that bad, really. Uh, and But you get an extraction chamber, which can be very beneficial down the line. And you'll want to do this to start because, yeah, the, let me tell you, this is where you really get into some OP stuff. So extraction chambers can have dirt or cobblestone inserted into them. And eventually, over time, they will start processing things. Let me take out this dirty circuit here that you see in place. And you will start seeing very slowly, it will probably start, yep, you can see it's now moving. It is like extracting stuff from the dirt and you can see it is slowly working and it will make as a byproduct either soil or small stone depending on what it's processing and it may have different random dirty circuits or damaged circuits damaged circuits come from cobblestone dirty circuits come from dirt but if you click on the uh, show recipes arrows here it will actually tell you exactly what it will make dirty circuits right there pretty simple right it's, it's not that bad most of the machines that i'm about to show you will have a similar option so don't forget that if you forget it and of course you've got your wrench uh, you can use to access these tools if you so desire uh, you can actually add in circuits which will enhance the abilities of some of these machines which i will show you uh, once we get down the line a little further because right now you don't really have the option on how to make those circuits but you still might be able to power them but now you also have a better way of powering these machines with your starch extractor which you can see it is now storing backups uh, power here because it is creating more power than this thing has space to store uh, so moving on down the line we now have a restoration chamber 
Restoration Chambers, Redstone Ingots, plus Weakened Diamonds. Remember, the four of those are just one diamond, but your Extraction Chamber requires a diamond as well. So it's it's a, getting a little bit more expensive, but really, it, it's not that much. So what does this do? This takes dirty circuits, and it will restore them. So if I take this dirty stir circuit, put it in here, it will, over time, start processing it. If I've got some power in there, let's, let's drop a little bit of, of power. There you go. And it's starting to work now. You can see it's very slowly... Very slow process. So if you don't have any kind of upgrades in these things, it will take some time. But you can, as mentioned before, click on the Show Recipes button. You, you think, oh my gosh, look at all this stuff. It's all really the same when you think about it. It's all just dirty circuits. They're all labeled the same with different metadata here or, uh, you know, IDs. So you just have all dirty circuits being cleaned. They get turned into regular circuits, which you can then analyze later on. Now, of course, reassembly chamber. What does that do? That takes care of damaged uh, circuits. So let me grab a damaged circuit, put that up here, drop in a bunch of coal, and we should be good to go. Now, I'm just using the coal, uh, the purified coal here as a really quick way of inserting power. Uh, I'm just showing you that it does require power. Otherwise, I would recommend you use your starch extractor here so that you can get a decent power level. And of course, reassembly chamber takes damaged stuff and turns it into regular circuits as well. So once again, You've got plenty of things to go over. And if you look, uh, the uh, similarity of the recipes here is pretty much the, they're, they're the same. It'll make the same kind of circuits, just out of two different types of materials at this current state. And you have a chance of getting all sorts of different looking ones. So don't think that you're always going to get the same exact one. Uh, you can see this one here. It, it cleaned that one off. If, it, if it's already dirty, it will, you know, it looks like this. It will obviously come out to look like that. And you can see the before and the after. It's these uh, dirty and damaged ones that are the random ones uh, when you are making this stuff. And this is just a chance. Uh, if I take, now forgive me for a moment for jumping ahead to the speed upgrades, but this is just to uh, demonstrate to you guys. Uh, you can see here that it is still working. I've got 31 soil. It, it takes a bit of time. Now I, I just accidentally clicked in uh, only like one speed upgrade. Let me grab a bunch of speed upgrades here. We'll just plop them in. I think it'll take up to 16. And you can see it's really chunking through the uh, power and it's, it's just constantly processing these. And there we go. It took like about 10 or 11 of these before I finally got a dirty circuit or before I would finally get a damaged circuit. It takes a bit of time with the extraction chamber. Oh, let me tell you, it takes a bit of time with the extraction chamber. This is why I recommend you skip the extraction chamber. Once you've got one made, you should save your materials and make yourself a precision chamber. This is better in every way. Okay, so instead of having a low chance of getting uh, those things processed, you have a 100% chance of getting things processed. So let me grab a cobblestone here and let me grab my uh, the, the fuel back. So the, um, actually I should mention that the recipe for this is weakened diamond reinforced iron blocks around an extraction chamber. So I recommend, once again, this is just like one more diamond's worth, uh, but the reinforced iron blocks, that's going to be a lot of iron for you to make. But it's not so bad if you've already got yourself processing reinforced iron blocks instead of making them with a calculator. Uh, so, well, if you follow what I'm saying with the extraction machine or rather a stone separator, not the extraction machine. Please excuse me, but this will get you a lot more reinforced iron from very little amounts of iron. And I recommend you do that ASAP so you can get yourself a precision chamber. Now, if I put this in here and I put in a bit of power, let's put in a bunch here. It of course is going to take a bit of time, but don't worry, I've got speed upgrades. And then let's click on this. You can see it, it worked one try. That's because it's got a 100% chance of uh, processing dirty or damaged circuits. So you don't have to, you know, in this case, it's, it, I was just using the extraction and the, um, the extraction chambers here. I have two of them processing these. You could just have one and feed, alternately feed in those things. But reassembly and restoration chambers are still going to be required in some way, shape, or form. So anyway, you get yourself a damaged circuit and minimal uh, byproduct here. And of course, you can always remove your uh, speed upgrades and whatnot if you so desire. But you can see that it is now much simpler. You don't have to go through a whole stack of dirt. You can just go through like one or two of these. And if you've got some upgrades in it, it'll take practically no time at all. So let me put this precision chamber back down and we'll move on to the next one, the analyzing chamber. Analyzing chamber, 
is made in a similar way, uh, the, which is reinforced iron blocks, weakened diamonds, and an advanced assembly in the center, which is going to be enriched gold ingots, calculator assemblies, and a reinforced iron ingot. So it's not as bad, but there is a bit of micro crafting involved there. And you're probably wondering, well, what, what benefit is this? Well, if you're, you're probably wondering what the heck use is all these circuits at this point. I mean, seriously, I've got, what is this reassembly circuit? Let's put this in here. Uh, if I put a bunch of upgrades in this one as well, then it should also process really fast. There we go. I've got a circuit here. I've got a circuit here. And if you notice when I hover over, it says not analyzed. That is what the analyzing chamber does. So if I put it in here, I have a chance of actually getting an output from it. But you can click on the arrows as before, show recipes. And it will tell you a chance of getting any of these items by analyzing this stuff. You might get a calculator, you might get reinforced dirt, reinforced stones, some small stones, soil, a uh, power cube, uh, broccoli, some reinforced tools, um, some more uh, grenades, calculator assemblies, uh, more tools, more circuits. You might get advanced terrain modules. You might get things that you don't have access to making just yet, like a health processor uh, or, you know, the tanzanite, uh, flawless diamonds. Very important. It's very low chance, but depending on how much stuff you're processing, you might get some of these items, which can be useful. So let's put one in here and it says it's analyzed and no items, no power. That That's pretty bad. Oh, but this one here, you see a grenade popped in. I, I just got a grenade from it and it is analyzed. So if I get some more circuits and you notice there's no power actually being put in here, but there is a power meter. Oh, there is a good reason for that. Let's grab a bunch of these and we'll put some of these in. You'll notice that as some of these circuits get processed on occasion, you might get one that glows. Well, those ones might get you more stuff. Oh, look at this. We got broccoli seeds. Okay. But another one, nothing. Another one, nothing. Another one, nothing, nothing. And this last one says stable. Stable circuits you're going to want to save. But you might also think, well, this, these things don't stack. What the heck? Well, they do, but only in a storage chamber. Storage chamber is made pretty much only with an atomic calculator. So that, that's something that you're not going to be able to access at the moment. But I just wanted to make you aware there is a way of storing these things. If you look here, I'm just kind of clicking them in. And if they're analyzed and not a stable version, then you can actually have them all stack in here and work with what I'm about to show you, a fabrication chamber. But at the moment, you won't be able to craft it until you can make yourself an atomic uh, calculator there. So yeah, ki kind of a downside, but yeah, kind of, oh well, what, what, what are you going to do? And you can toss these things in. Oh look, I got some a large tanzanite. Uh, I got, let's see, we've got some more reinforced dirt. Do I have anything else? Ooh, this one here gave me two items, starch extractor and tanzanite wood, which could be useful. You can get up to six items, and you potentially could also get some power back. Aha, that one gave us 10,000 power, just as an example there, to show you guys that there are many, many different things. I mean, look at all this stuff in my inventory here. Once I dump out all these other circuits... You can see all the different items. I, I've thrown away a bunch of them, but you can see all the different junk that I've, I've, I've gathered here. I even got an advanced terrain module, which there's like a 0.2% chance of getting one of those things. Now to continue on with this, a fabrication chamber. This will actually make items for you if you're having difficulty in actually obtaining them, to a point. Uh, so for instance, an atomic module will require all of these different items. It, it's a bit ridiculous, but this thing is going to access a connected storage chamber and make the items you so desire. Now a fabrication chamber is made simply with a storage chamber, reinforced iron ingots, and reinforced iron blocks. Of course, this stuff, once again, won't be accessible because this is going to need to be made by an atomic calculator. Uh, there are ways you may be able to come about that beforehand, but otherwise, that's pretty much going to be it. Uh, now, if you are to make this stuff, let's make something very simple. Uh, let's see, a warp module? No. There we go, a calculator screen. I know I've got plenty of these in here. There we go, I've got like 16 of them or something. So if I hit fabricate, it will then start slowly making that item because it is next to it and it doesn't require any power. If I click on here, it can show you all the different recipes it can make, uh, which are actually the same recipes that are listed here on the left. So you don't really need to click on that, but it is usually a much better, 
much bigger representation as well for what you might want to make. And you can see here, there we go, calculator screen is made. So this item here can make you a lot of really useful and interesting items. And now on to the upgrades. Upgrades are going to be very key for speeding up any and all progress with the calculator mod going forward. You're going to want to make these as, as much as you possibly can. So uh, how, do you, how do you make these things? Now you can, of course, make it with an atomic calculator or in a fabrication chamber. Uh, but, you know, fabrication chambers, of course, are gated behind an atomic calculator. So once you've got one made, you might be able to access it. And of course, you've got your energy upgrades, which are going to uh, decrease the amount of energy used. Your speed upgrades, which are going to increase the speed. Your uh, void upgrades, which when used in something like an analyzing chamber, when you put something in there like uh, some circuits, it will just get rid of any and all uh, results that come through there so that you don't have to have any of these going through. You're just looking for like stable ones or something like that. Uh, but that's basically what a void one does. And then you've got your transfer upgrade, which will allow you to actually transfer things uh, in some of these machines. Now, if I go over here, some of these will have different options. You can see this one has transfer energy and speed, but no voiding option. This one here has transfer energy, speed, and void. So that's what these are referring to. It's just that most of these are going to be gated behind these two items, and I wanted to explain a bit of that, even though it is a bit premature, uh, since a lot of people might be wondering what the heck those are for, how they can access them and potentially get them in the future. Now, something else you should know, if you see all these little green boxes on these machines, all of them except for the storage chamber and the fabrication chamber are going to have an option of turning them to input or output. So therefore you can have things like hoppers feed into them or out of them, uh, potentially in or out below or above, and it might help also to, you know, get everything automated in a way that you so desire, which is just a right click with the wrench. And now on to the algorithm separator. This guy here is really cool. Made with stone, two stone separators, a couple of power cubes, and a lot of reinforced iron, uh, well, just iron, reinforced iron in general. The algorithm separator, let me put that back down here, is going to be used primarily for turning lapis into tanzanite. Now, if you click on here, it'll show you the different recipes, uh, large blocks into smaller ones and so on. I recommend once again to do the lapis lazuli pieces uh, and therefore you get tanzanite and you can use those tanzanite once you have a bunch of them to make large tanzanite and you'll get a lot more of these tanzanite shards. But if you're in a really big hurry, you could always go with just a lapis lazuli block and get the large tanzanite and the tanzanite shards, which you might need those, but it's just one way of getting more materials out of it. You can also turn diamonds into weakened diamonds with lapis as a side product or a byproduct. Redstone can be turned into redstone ingots with small stones as a byproduct. Tanzanite leaves, etc. can be turned into other things here, which tanzanite leaves and tanzanite wood are going to be a little bit beyond, if only because uh, tanzanite, while a obtainable material, you won't be able to grow a sapling until you have an atomic calculator or you get really lucky with an analyzing chamber. Uh, you might get a sapling drop, and in which case, then you could potentially make more saplings. But uh, for now, just know that your algorithm separator is going to be key for getting tanzanite. And why do you want tanzanite? Well, at this stage, tanzanite is going to be used for making an advanced greenhouse, which has much more benefits over the basic one. And I'm about to go over that. Uh, of course, you have all the same information in here that you did with the basic one, so I'm not going to go over that again. And I also already have everything set up in here with just a bunch of spruce and white stained glass. Plus, I used some purified coal in this case, but you are more than welcome to use your starch extractor to fill this thing up. It only took me, I think... Uh, like what, two, four, six pieces of coal and three potatoes, I think, would probably do it to fill this power up instead of like stacks and stacks of, of uh, coal just to try and get this thing halfway full. So keep that in mind that this processes things very differently uh, than your average furnace would. So with it being out in place, I have this set up here. Actually, let me change my game mode so you can, I can get a bird's eye view. It's a seven by seven square of preferably some kind of dirt or soil should do just fine. Uh, and it will actually, as before, build your entire setup for you, which is a really cool automated process. You just watch and it will slowly, it even replaces some of the dirt blocks with uh, wood. It'll then start building the uh, roof here and so on. 
And it's a much bigger area, allowing you to actually process a lot more stuff. And it will automatically create farmland, put some water in the corners, and you're good to go. Now, what is the benefit of an advanced greenhouse? Well, one, it's bigger, so you can do a lot more all at once. Number two, you can do prune seeds in here. Now, prune seeds, I don't know if I covered these before or not, but they are made simply with enriched colon seeds in a regular calculator, and you can grow some yourself. And what do they yield? They yield small amounts of coal. So if I, I look this up here, you got your little coal dust. The uh, There's no recipe for this one if you look it up in JEI, because this is grown from prune seeds. And if you put these in here, plop them in place, you can see that that's going to start growing those up. Uh, now, of course, you once again are going to want to reduce the oxygen in the atmosphere and get yourself some lanterns, gas lanterns to be specific. Uh, let me just get in here, set these up, and I'll be right back. There we go. I now have four lanterns in here at the moment, and you can see prune seeds have these little black dots on them as they grow. And once again, if you don't have a chest, sitting out in front of the uh, greenhouse, then it will just spit things out into the world <laughs> as it tries growing them. But you can still access your greenhouse uh, uh, you know, panel here just by clicking on the back. And you can see that it is slowly converting the uh, CO2 and oxygen values so that the uh, CO2, it, I don't know if you can read it, it's a very faint 4.5%, 4.6, 4.7, etc. And this is coming down in a similar amount. So therefore, it's going to have these things speed up their growth potentially get you that tiny coal, which you can then use that tiny coal to power things, because why not? I mean, the, the coal itself can be used uh, to make, well, one, to burn. It, it, it's, you know, 1,000 burn time. But two of those together in a calculator will get you enriched coal, which you can then use for everything else. So you now have a way of automating making all of your power gen. Uh, you can grow food as well as coal. It's, it's really good, and with a starch generator, starch extractor, or starch generator as I'm calling it, uh, you can therefore have the wonderful circle of life. And I think that's probably about it for today's episode on the calculator mod, and this should get you well into where you need to go to next, the atomic calculator and further. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, spread the mischief to others if you think they'll enjoy this content too. And until next time, folks. I'll see ya.